What's up, Ride Warriors, and welcome to the very first episode of Toy Trek. Now, a lot of you are wondering, why are we doing this? And the simple answer is, I like Star Trek, I like action figures, and I actually got my very first internet writing job talking and writing all about Star Trek action figures. So, the big news is, is that we actually have two brand new action figures to talk about here today. Now, it's been quite some time since we've had Star Trek action figures to talk about. Um, so, we'll be reviewing today uh, both the Captain Picard, the Jean-Luc Picard action figure uh, from the brand new McFarlane Toys line, and we'll also be looking at the Captain James T. Kirk action figure from the same line. Now we've got some surprises here. We'll be comparing them to other action figures from great Star Trek lines. So I really hope that you enjoy what we have presented here. Uh, so let's get right into some great shots of these action figures. So I guess the first thing to look at here are the packaging uh, for these two action figures. Um, and the packaging uh, for both the Picard and Kirk are very similar to one another. They're the same exact style. Uh, so you're going to have uh, finally a line that has a unified packaging look to it. Um, you have a beautiful painting of, of the uh, actor and the character up in the corner. Uh, some bright whites, some red, some yellow, some blue. Um, overall, I think it's, it's very Spartan, this packaging. Uh, com and, and especially when comparing it to the old art asylum packaging for the original series which was really striking with the with the delta on the front in the blister um even with uh you know having that same communicator uh, themed idea with the next generation line uh, was really cool so i think art asylum and diamond select uh, toys had better packaging um, so let's start with looking at Captain Picard here. Um, now this one, I the, the first thing about this figure is that I think they chose a very strange uniform. Uh, that if you look at some of these pictures, you can see two uh, seams down the red front panel um, of, of his uh, top. And this is actually from early on in season three of Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, we don't really see these uh, these seams on any of the other uniforms later on in the series. So right off the bat, I think it's a really strange design choice that they chose to put those seams there, that they chose this style of uh, uniform, uh, when probably the stuff from later in the series was more iconic overall. So that notwithstanding, I still think this is a pretty good action figure. Um, overall, if you look at some of these pictures here, you can see that the proportions are a little bit strange. He is a little bit barrel chested. Uh, his legs do come down, uh, to, basically they're a lot skinnier than, than I think a, a pair of pants should be on an action figure. Um, and they kind of give the figure itself, um, almost the best thing I can compare it to is the way that uh, some of the Batman animated series uh, action figures kind of stand and kind of look uh, from the new DC Direct series. Um, it, it has that same very skinny legs. Um, it does cause this figure in particular to be a little top heavy. Uh, so he does have a few problems uh, with standing uh, on his own, and, and I find the the uh, the joints to be just a little bit loose, uh, especially when it comes to the legs, which is unfortunate because of uh, you know him being top heavy, because of his legs being skinnier. These loose joints uh, really make this action figure a little bit difficult to stand and pose overall. The articulation on this figure is actually pretty good for uh, one of the larger scale six to seven inch Star Trek action figures. Uh, you do have the ball joints at the shoulder, you have the ball and swivel joints at the uh, elbows. Uh, it does come with one extra hand accessory that is, I believe, to my knowledge, for this scale or for anything smaller, is the first time that you can actually get a Picard figure to do the Make It So, uh, the make it so point, uh, which I think is actually really, really cool. Um, and then for the legs, you have a standard, you know, swivel joints, and then you also have these extenders that, you know, allow him to do the splits completely. Um, so that's interesting as well. Um, I'm not quite sure. I guess you can get some extra action poses out of that. 
Um, those types of joints we kind of see on a lot of the uh, NECA action figures. Um, and and I, I don't know if, if they're absolutely necessary. I'm not a huge fan of those joints. Um, but then the knees, you have the ball and swivel. And then the feet can move uh, ever so slightly as well. Um, so overall, pretty good articulation on this figure. So I guess let's get down to the actual lightness uh, to Patrick Stewart. Um, and you know what? The, the, I, I'm really, I'm really torn on this head sculpt. That I, on the one level, I think it, I, I think from different perspectives. If you look at it from a side profile, if you look at it, you know, in, in different types of shadows, it really captures. Uh, Patrick Stewart's likeness, especially uh, when he was younger and, you know, in the first few seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, the one thing I, I will say both about this figure and the Kirk figure is that for some reason they only chose to do one paint app on the eyes. Um, that they just did complete brown for the eyes, which I think is okay, uh, but without having the white behind it, without having any color added to the actual pupil itself, uh, in, in many times when, when you look at, especially the, a flash exposed picture, or if you look at it directly on, it almost gives that uh, his facial features a beady eye look, which kind of ruins um, a, a lot of the sculpt work that they actually did on it. And I, I'm confused as to why they didn't put the whites behind the eyes. I don't know if it's an issue of uh, it's just too fine of a detail, and, and we've seen on many action figures that um, that the whites, you know, if, if it's even off by a little bit, it, it kind of ruins the whole face. So maybe they just decided that we're not going to do those extra paint apps and just do the, the solid brown. Um, and and I think I think to some extent it works, um, but I also think in many different poses. You, you almost lose, especially a straight on pose, you almost lose the sense of Patrick Stewart in the figure. Uh, but then when you look at him from the side again, it, it's right back there. Uh, the hair is done amazingly, uh, you know, a, a gray hair uh, with a lighter gray uh, paint wash over it. Um, I have to say that the paint wash on the entire figure is really good. Even on the red sections of the figure, you have a deeper red paint wash. Uh, that's amazing. On, on this figure, I'm looking at the pips on his collar and they're all perfectly placed. So it kind of makes me think they're pretty good at placing paint apps on action figures. So I, I still don't know why they didn't do the eyes. Um, you know, the, uh, the TNG communicator, uh, pin on his, on his, uh, you know, breast is, is, is well painted as what well, in addition to that. Uh, so overall, I think the likeness is right there. I, I think maybe some of the highlights with the reddish to make it more of a skin tone, you know, almost give it a fake look to it. Um, but I think the hair and the side profile are all really fantastic. And I love the paint apps overall on this figure. So the accessories that come with Captain Picard um, are the extra hand uh, that you can do the make it so pose with, which is really cool. Uh, you do get uh, the standard uh, next generation phaser uh, that is pretty much a lot more detailed uh, than the Diamond Select version of that same phaser. The Diamond Select uh, version had uh, just a lot of paint apps to represent stuff and was kind of just cut out of plastic. Uh, did have some detailing on the top, uh, but this one, as you can see, has a lot more detailing overall, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, on the underside, on the top side, on the handles. Uh, so I do like this phaser a lot better uh, than the Diamond Select version. Um, and then he also comes with the uh, Resican Flute uh, from the episode The Inner Light. Now, I, I don't know what it is with toy companies and this flute, uh, we saw this same thing uh, with, uh, you know, the Diamond Select release, uh, that it was the flute and the box. This figure comes with just the flute. You know, I, I got to imagine that there has to be some sort of other accessory that can come with a Captain Picard figure. Um, you know, a, a whore gun or uh, you, there's just so many things that, that, that Captain Picard is known for. Like even a little Picard Day doll. Uh, would be welcome. I, I just don't know what it is with people in this flute. It's a great episode. The Inner Light was a great Next Generation episode, uh, you know, really outside the box thinking with what was going on there. Um, but to have that same accessory come with uh, multiple figures at this point is a little bit strange in my book. So I guess it's time to line up this McFarlane version of Jean-Luc Picard alongside other versions. And here you can see 
that I've put this figure up against some of the Diamond Select action figures. Um, so first, you can see from that very first wave of the next generation, uh, that Picard figure was always way too bulky, in my opinion. Uh, too big, too bulky. John, uh, you know, Jean-Luc Picard, Patrick Stewart, is a little bit smaller um, in real life, and, and I think the show tried to hide it a little bit, his size, in comparison to the other actors. Um, but that action figure was way out of proportion, um, and I, I, I think I, that likeness on that figure uh, was never a huge fan of mine. Um, you know, I, I was never a huge fan of it at all. Uh, now, moving on to the Nemesis figure um, that you see on the far left here, that was an original Art Asylum release for the Nemesis movie. And I really think that that was one of the better Captain Picard sculpts, of, at least for the head. Um, you can say what you will about the uniform, and, and as you can see, the uniform is completely different. But I added it here just to give you a different perspective on what that head looks like. And then I, I, uh, the the, uh, the third action figure uh, in that row is actually a custom one that I did. I took the Nemesis head and put it on one of the uh, Diamond Select Nemesis releases. I believe that's from um, a, a Diamond Select Nemesis data figure. And then I added some extra details on the front to give him the zipper look. And I, I really think that scale um, and this height, and you can see this McFarlane figure is a little bit smaller. I think it still works. Um, you know, I think it's still going to look good alongside of your other figures and maybe even some of your Diamond Select action figures. So if that's one of the big questions that you have is should you buy this or is this starting a whole completely new scale? Um, I, I think to some extent, yes and no. It'll be interesting to see how the rest of the figures, if there are any other figures uh, from Next Generation in this line play out and how big they're going to be. Um, but let me say I'm pretty optimistic. I'm pretty happy with this figure overall uh, to put him in my collection. Um, I think, you know, to sum it up, I'm a little bit upset by the, the, by the uniform choice um, and having those seams on the front because I think it, it leads to the figure um, having some weird proportions overall. I think the lightness is good, uh, but the paint apps might be a little bit better on the face uh, and could have led to that being a lot more impressive. Uh, but overall, I have to say that that for the price point of about $18 here, uh, this is a real fine action figure. Uh, so I think you're going to really enjoy uh, adding this one to your next generation collection. Um, so let's move on to the James Tiberius Kirk action figure. Now, the Kirk figure, I think, uh, is a lot more impressive overall than the Picard figure. Um, and that's really saying something, because I do really like the Picard figure, uh, you know, and I'm very happy to have it. Uh, but this one, first, William Shatner uh, has a likeness that is very, very difficult to capture. Uh, we, we saw it with Diamond Select and Art Asylum, uh, very good sculptors, and they, they kind of floundered on... It, it was good for that time, uh, but, but overall, looking back on those figures now, that likeness is okay, but it's missing something. And I really think that this is where McFarlane has really hit this one out of the park. Uh, that, that this Shatner likeness is, is absolutely spot on. Um, once again, my one little nitpick about it is, is the BDI syndrome. Is not having the whites behind it and only having one color um, on the eyes does detract a little bit from the overall likeness. Uh, but overall, if you, you get the right shadow on this and, and you look at it from different perspectives... And I'll tell you what, this looks like William Shatner, and this looks like James uh, James T. Kirk. So I am really, really happy uh, overall with the likeness on this figure and with how well this figure turned out. So the Kirk figure has generally the same um, articulation pattern as the Picard one does, so I won't go through it. He too suffers from the loose leg uh, syndrome, where on that hinge joint, um, you know, on the leg, uh, it is a little bit loose, so it does prevent a little bit uh, you having to get perfect posing from it. Um, but let me say this, that this is by far the best sculpt for a uniform I've ever seen on a Star Trek, uh, you know, next or uh, original series action figure. And this uniform looks great. You can, if you look at it real close, you can see that there's slight texture on it, um, you know, kind of reminiscent of the old 60s show. Um, the, the lines are really great with the lines coming down to the sh on the shoulders, going all the way down the sides, uh, sculpted on, uh, you know, ranking braids. 
sculpted on, um, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the patch for, uh, for his division and his ship on his, on his breast. Uh, just really great sculpt work here, and, and a very big difference from uh, the old Art Asylum uh, days, when it was almost like the rubbery shirt. The rubbery shirt was kind of cool um, at first, and, and I know a lot of people experience problems with dirt on those rubber shirts. Uh, with the rubber shirts, if you, if you leave them out too long, sometimes they, you know, harden and crack. Uh, you are not going to have any of those problems uh, with this uh, Captain Kirk figure here uh, because this is all fully sculpted and it just looks out outstanding. The pants um, have like the perfect, uh, you know, uh, ripples where they should be uh, with, with almost like the capri look with the boots that are, uh, you know, a lot more glossy than the pants. Um, I, I would say that this uniform is just out, out of this world amazing. So I'm really excited and hopeful uh, that they do other figures in this line. Uh, so, you know, this this overall, this figure, I think it's far better than the Picard figure. I think people are going to really, really like this one. Kirk also comes with a few um, accessories. Uh, one is his uh, phaser uh, that is a lot bigger than the Art Asylum slash Diamond Select uh, phaser. I think it looks great. The paint apps on it are amazing. Uh, even down to the back detail with those slight stripes, uh, it still looks amazing. Uh, it, it gives a nice presence in his hand. Uh, he also comes with a communicator that looks very similar to the Diamond Select Art Asylum version. Uh, the gold is a lot more prominent. Uh, I think that one looks great as, all, all, as well. Uh, his, also, his hand sculpt uh, allows him to hold that communicator, or it should allow him to hold that communicator in a perfect way. It is very difficult to get him to hold it and have it stay there. Um, so if you're going to display this one out of the box, um, I think you might have to use a little uh, tacky or um, some sort of a system to keep that communicator in his hand because I see I see there's no way that it's going to stay there for a long period of time on its own. Um, the one thing I will say about uh, his accessories that I, I thought did I didn't like was the phaser rifle. Um, and you can kind of see in this picture that the middle part is articulated so you can kind of spin it. But the problem is, is that it doesn't really stay in its holding very well. Um, that when you try and uh, put the hand on to hold the handle, and when you try and pose him with the phaser rifle, um, it kind of falls apart a lot. Um, so I, I will not be using that phaser rifle, even though it is, um, it is much more detailed than the, um, than the uh, Diamond Select version and the Art Asylum version. There's a lot more detail on it with sculpted on buttons and things like that. It looks great, um, but I don't think him holding it is probably the way to go with this action figure. So overall, you can get some great poses out of this figure. Uh, it looks great, you know. Uh, you can sit him down in his captain's chair here. I have him in, in the movie chair. Uh, not so much from uh, the original Enterprise. That, that's packed away somewhere. I couldn't find it in time for this. Um, but this this figure is just really, really outstanding. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, the other figures in this line. Um, so if, if you size them next to each other, uh, you know, you can see this picture here with the Picard and Kirk right next to each other. Um, the cool thing is that it seems like we might finally have uh, Star Trek figures that are all in the same scale. Uh, that we know that Diamond Select slash Art Asylum, the next or the uh, next generation figures were a lot bigger than the original series figures, um, which kind of led to some problems down the line when they started reusing molds for the movie figures. Uh, but it seems like Kirk and Picard kind of on the same footing here. The Picard might be a smidge too big uh, for Kirk, um, but I think overall on a shelf, these two figures are going to look great next to one another, um, and I think you're really going to enjoy them. Uh, so overall, I would like to thank you for joining us here on the very first episode of Toy Trek. I am super excited about Star Trek figures. Uh, in the next few months here, uh, like I said before, with the Art Asylum, or excuse me, the Diamond Select releases of the 2009 um, action figures, with more uh, figures in this line, we, we see on the back of the box that Spock is planned, uh, that Michael Burnham is planned from the new Discovery series, so I am super excited to see where the McFarlane line goes, to see where the, art, or the uh, Diamond Select uh, line goes. 
Uh, so I, I'm really excited about all of this. So as always, thank you for joining us here. I'm, of course, Andrew Barczyk, Um, And trek on, Trek Warriors.